Hi everybody, so this kind of wind turbine is commonly known as a VAWT, a vertical axis wind turbine, for obvious reasons the axis is in the vertical. However, there are two ways you can have a wind turbine. One's like this, and the other is where it's turned up, and that's the normal way you see with the wind farms out at sea, big fans on a big stick, and they're horizontal access wind turbines. And there are basically those two types. Now, regular viewers of the channel will know that I'm a fan of this vertical access type because I think they perform better in urban environments, and of course they're a hell of a lot neater and much more compact, so I do love them. However, a couple of people have asked, in particular, no or nobody, OK, that works like that, we've seen it do that, but will it work like that? And that's actually a really good question, because if we can do that, then we have the Swiss Army knife of all turbines, and we could end that VAWT, HAWT argument, because now we have a turbine that can be either. Um, like that, it can't. And it can't because right here, it has a thrust bearing, right there. And of course, if we turn that round like that, what's going to happen is exactly what just happened. The thrust bearing is going to drop out. So in order to work this as a HAWT, it's pretty simple. Just remove the thrust bearing and I've got a spacer. We pop the spacer on and the spacer is there just to stop this bit rubbing on that bit. When we put the spacer on, then the thing will now turn, but it turns on these here rather than on the thrust bearing, so suddenly we're using these two bearings that we've got in the rotor. Now this is obviously made in a modular way, and it's made in a modular way so we can do these changes if we want. So we could have vertical or horizontal just by adding in a couple of spacers. So I'm going to add those spacers in, and then we're going to see if it actually works. There we go, as a horizontal wind turbine. Okay, we brought it out into the wind to see if it works in real life. <laughs> Unfortunately, real life doesn't always have wind and it does have noise. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what we do is put it on a pole, got a little fin, oh, so it directs itself into wherever the wind is coming from, and of course it hits a wind turbine. Look at that bad boy go! <laughs> that is awesome! <laughs> there you go, it will in fact work as either vertical or a horizontal. So it should end that argument, I would hope. It'll probably just raise other arguments, obviously. But this, indeed, is the Swiss Army knife of wind generators. Because, you know, here we've got the rotor and it's got the generator section is contained in it. Now, don't forget, this is just a copy of Mike Waters' wind turbine. Sure, OK, I've extended this bit here, but that's what it is. So if you want performance data, well, just look at Mike Waters. He's done a whole load of work on the talk, etc., 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 of this particular device. So check that out, and you'll get all the info you want if what you're looking for is just numbers. Now, on the... Um, design of this we had a flat profile and quite a few people mentioned that you can see that i've turned it into a conical profile so i've made this a con i've updated the stl files so what you'll find on tinkercad is the new conical profile of this section here rather than the flat profile it had and as i say, i've done it in a modular format so even though i make changes to stuff as we go along if you're printing the modules the modules are interchangeable you'll be able to swap one for the other so you're not going to be wasting your time printing things if you uh, if i make a change to one of the designs then you can just print the change that I made to the rest of the module will fit so I'm trying to make it that way as well I've also made some decisions that people have asked about like why are you using thrust bearings in case, instead of maglev well thrust bearings are dead easy to get hold of hey eh? and maglev can be a little temperamental particularly when it comes to stuff like the weight of the rotor and the forces of the wind you can do it it's a little temperamental a thrust bearing for the extra friction that you get, you get an ease in making it. And so I've chosen to do thrust bearing versions because 
you know, it's just easier for everybody to do it. If you want to do maglev, well, just do maglev. It's, it's up to you what you want to do. I'm doing thrust because I think it's more uh, accessible to everybody. The reason for the serpentine coil is exactly the same reason. It's dead easy to make a serpentine coil than it is to wind 36 other coils. So a lot of the design decisions I make are to do with ease and cheapness and uh, the ability to repeat it. But there you go, I thought I would do that now, but I hope it answers that question. I personally thought it was fascinating because obviously we can make this a VAWT now by sticking a pole in there and a tail on it. Brilliant! Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe.